Mario Samini sees things a little differently than most robot researchers. Inspired by nature, his robot has been developed to imitate the mobility and agility of four-legged animals. The main reason is to have vehicles like this being able to help the people on rough terrain. Its name is IQ, and it is a very agile quadruped, four-legged robot. It can walk, it can run, it can jump, and it can keep its balance no matter what they throw at it. There's one thing it is missing though, a head. It has no eyes to see. So far it has a limited perception, so perception is only what it senses. We can just throw random objects like rocks or, or, or pieces of wood and the robot can adapt its steps. So basically it feels that there is an obstacle and it starts to keep the balance by um, assuming that this is his new foothold. But thanks to the vision of Claudio's robotics team, that's all about to change. Today, for the first time, the robot will have a stereo camera that allows it to see a 3D uh, world. HiQ is getting a set of eyes. In fact, two sets, a pan and tilt camera as well as a stereo one. I think we can just try the tracking first without any pressure. It's a tricky proposition, though. I'm very, uh, a bit nervous and, and uh, anxious to see how it, how it will behave. As it always is in research, if you put something new for the first time, we're, we're never 100% sure if it's going to work. One thing that's working quite well in HiQ, it's legs. The advantage of legs compared to wheeled and uh, tracked vehicles is that legs can go on very much more difficult grounds. So, uh, for example, in a forest or in a collapsed house, where there's a lot of rubble lying around. As a very first prototype, we built one leg and we tested one leg with two joints. And then later on, we created uh, four improved legs. Reactive behaviors are programmed in so that if it comes upon an obstacle, it can go over it, react, and keep its balance. It doesn't matter what size and what shape the, the object has, but it knows that there is an object now. And on top, it has a sensor that measures its um, balance, so it's, its orientation of the body. And it can basically start to make corrective actions with the legs to keep the body upright. So this is all about the balance. It's similar to the vestibular system that we have in our ear. So if HiQ was getting around so well by feel, why throw vision into the mix? So if we add a, a real perception system that has a camera, we can start to map the whole environment. We can basically start to get a 3D representation of what is around the robot. Okay, ready to go. IQ is about to get its first vision test. Maybe we can just put the screws before, no? First up, its new pan and tilt head will attempt to track and follow an object. So start the tracker. It seems to be working very well. Yeah, it's working quite fast, it's quite reactive. We can actually see it on the screen there as well. What you can see here actually is that um, the, the uh, camera is tracking very well here the yellow object and you can see it always keeps the, the object in the center of the camera. Now a bigger challenge, and this could be dangerous, to track the object while it's walking. In case anything happens, a person comes close, the robot has a problem, we push the safety button. And we have another emergency button here. So we can push this any time in case there's a problem. Go zero. Go zero, three, two, one. Yeah, very good. This worked very well. <laughs> well, it all worked well so far. So the first experiment showed that actually the the neck, let's say the, the, the new head can track an object. So this is milestone number one we want to see. Now we're up for number two. The steerer camera will allow us to now map in 3D what the robot is seeing. Will IQ be able to see these obstacles with his new 3D vision while on the move? We're good to go, guys. Yeah, let's see the screen. The first set of images are a little it rocky. We check the screen now, we check the quality of the point cloud of the 3D map and it's not so good yet, so we want to actually retry the same experiment again. Okay. Why do you think that happened? 
Well, I think the, the angle of the camera right now was not as, as good as it should be, and we ch changed it slightly now, and we try again. We are ready. Okay, let's do it again. Lower the robot. So I think it's off. Going forward. Oh, oh, oh. So after this trial now, we should be able to see the 3D map on the screen over there. Sure enough, the mapping is better this time. Today we try stuff. It was working, so for the first time, we are able to map the environment outside. We're actually very proud of what we have achieved so far. We're all quite excited about today that we can add this new functionality, which will open up a lot of new possibilities. It might be small steps for one robot, but the vision is a giant leap for robot kind.